Hello, my name is Jonas Dizor, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a simple character which you will be able to import into Unity. In this case, we are going to use Tinkercad. Now, Tinkercad originally is made for a 3D printer object, but in this case, we are going to use Tinkercad in order to create our own characters. Now, we're going to click Create a new design. And here we can see the work plane. This is very important, so make sure before you export your project, the work plane is on the bottom left corner. Okay, in this case, I'm just going to click and drag a cylinder and a sphere. I'm just going to make the sphere 100 by 100 by 100 on every uh, side. It's going to be 100. So I'm going to have a perfect circle. You can zoom in and zoom out by using the wheel on your mouse. If you right click and you click and drag, you will be able to change the rotation. So in this case now, we are going to increase the height by clicking and dragging. And now I'm going to increase, place the circle, this sphere, Feather up, and I'm going to use the left arrow key on my keyboard to basically place the circle to the side. So keep rotating and keep pressing the left key arrow on the keyboard. Okay, now if I go that way, I can see it's almost in the middle. I'm just going to zoom out a bit and bring the circle further down a little bit. And if I click and drag my wheel on my mouse, I will be able to place the whole scene into a different position. Now, I'm going to select my cylinder now. I use the left arrow key on my keyboard. I'm going to bring the sphere down a bit. This looks good. And I'm going to select this. Uh, cylinder and I'm just going to click on this option here to duplicate the shape and then I'm going to use the right key on my keyboard to move it further to the side so I'm going to use the right click key on my keyboard now okay so these are the legs of my character now if I don't uh, separate these elements so I'm just going to click on my uh, sphere again then click and drag. I'm, I'm going to have to separate my elements, otherwise if I don't, when I import the object into Unity, I'm going to have a, a hollow uh, shape of the circle just below. Which means it's not going to look professional. So I will be able to bring these legs upwards once I import them into Unity. But before I do that, I need to make sure that Unity will um, receive them as separate um, entities so also I will need to, to separate to make sure that they are separated I need to make sure that I'm going to change the color as well of the other leg doesn't really matter what colors you are going to put by the time you import them into Unity we will learn how to add new colors to the shapes okay now I'm going to add a couple eyes to the character so I'm just going to bring this here and let's rotate let's rotate okay so now I'm going to use the left key on my keyboard and the bottom key on my keyboard just make sure that this will look like eyes okay. And I'm just going to duplicate this again by clicking this option here. Select the object and I'm just going to move it to the side. That's about right. Okay. And I'm just going to make sure that are separated. Like I said before, I'm going to do the same 
as I will do the legs, so I separate it. I'm going to bring them closer once I import them into Unity. So make sure your shapes are separated. Now, because the eyes will uh, blink, if I want to make them blink, will blink at the same time, I don't really need to uh, change the color, I don't need to separate them. However, if you wanted to close one eye uh, different times and the other eye different times, then you need to basically change the color of the other eye. So I'm just going to leave them same color so you can actually see exactly what I mean once I put them into Unity. Alright, I'm happy with this now. I'm going to click and drag. So I'm going to click and drag. Have a look where's my mouse cursor. I'm going to click and drag to highlight all the objects. I'm going to right click and drag a bit to the side. And so I can actually see this option here. The rotation tool. I'm going to click once. Let's zoom out a bit. I'm going to click once and I'm going to click here for the degrees and I'm just going to change the degrees to minus 90 and press the enter key on my keyboard. Now I've done this, I'm going to right click to make sure that the shape is, the work plane is on my left hand side. I'm going to place my, by clicking the dragon, I'm going to place the work plane in the same level as my eyes here, and I'm going to click and drag the object where the sphere is right in the middle here. Okay, perfect. Okay, now I've done this. I can click it, right click with my mouse. I'm going to use the top arrow key just to place the character further up or further to the side. Perfect. And now finally I need to click on the ruler once, place my mouse cursor where the this option is there, the, uh, the vector point. I'm going to click once and now I've got my ruler there in place. Okay, cool. So I'm ready now to uh, make sure you highlight all your objects there. And I'm ready now to click export. I'm just going to click objects, OBJ. I'm going to click on this arrow here, click show in folder. And I'm going to right click here and select open with and select Windows Explorer. I'm going to highlight both objects. And let's minimize everything else. I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop and I'm just going to call this folder Tinkers. I'm going to double click the Tinkers folder. Let's make it a bit smaller. And I'm going to click and drag both objects to my Tinkers folder. Okay. Now I'm going to open Unity. Make sure you open Unity Hoop. And I'm going to create a new project. And this project, I'm just going to call this project uh, Animated Character. OK, I'm going to click New. I'm going to select 3D. I'm just going to call him Animated Character. I'm just gonna let's select the folder where I want to save the project. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop for now. So in your case, you can put uh, the project to a folder where you can actually uh, find in the future. So I'm just gonna call this Unity Project Projects. Let's make it plural. Select the folder. Okay. Uh, oops, I didn't select the correct folder. So desktop, Unity Projects, let's put on select. And now I'm going to click Create. Uh, there's another object there. Let's quit now. Okay, my project is created. Now I'm going to click on the, I'm going to go to the hierarchy. I'm going to click on the plus icon. 
I'm going to click on 3D and then I'm going to click on Terrain. Let's zoom out a bit. Okay, the next thing I need to do is create a new folder within my Assets folder. I'm going to right click, select Create, select Folder. And I'm going to name this folder Tinkers. I'm going to double click the Tinkers folder. Then I'm going to go to my external Tinkers fold folder. Let's bring it up. And I'm going to click highlight both objects. I'm going to click and drag them over. Okay. Now this file contains all the colors, while well, this file contains all the objects. As you can see, if I click and drag this uh, object here, I can actually see the pictures, sorry, the colors, okay? However, if I delete this from here, I'm just going to select the file, select delete, and delete. Make sure you delete the tinker from the hierarchy as well. Now, if I go back to my folder, tinkers, and I only click and drag my tinker, as you can see, it's monochrome. So I don't really need the colors, so I'm going to put my own colors here. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. And I'm just going to rename this character gonna call him uh, T, Mr. T. Okay, let's call him Mr. T. All right. Now I'm gonna go to the assets. I'm gonna right click and select create new folder. I'm gonna call this folder materials. Within the materials folder, I'm going to add, I'm going to right click, select create, and I'm going to add three materials. So one material, I'm going to right click, create, and then select materials. I'm going to right click, create, and then select materials. Another way to add materials, once you have added the first material, is you can hold the control key down and by clicking and dragging, you can add uh, as many materials as you like. So as you can see, by clicking and dragging, by holding the control key down my keyboard, we'll be able to add multiple materials. If I hold the shift key down, so if I click on the first material here, and I hold the shift key down my keyboard and click on this last material here, and then press the delete key on my keyboard and click delete, these additional materials are deleted. So as you can see, there's multiple ways to do the same thing. As you get better and better with um, Unity, you will be able to save more time. Anyway, the first material, I'm just going to call this Eyes. The second material, I'm going to call it Legs. And the third material, I'm going to call it Head. With the Eyes material selected, I'm going to go to the Inspectors panel and here I will be able to see color picker. So I'm just going to make his eyes green. I'm going to click on the head. Uh, let's make his head blue. And I'm going to click on his legs and let's make his legs red. Now I'm going to go to my hierarchy panel, expand my tinker, and let's name the objects appropriately. So I'm going to click here and type head. I'm going to click here. I'm going to type eyes. As you can see, because the eyes were in this, the same color when I export the project, the eyes as came into Unity as a single object. So where the legs, because I have the legs as different colors, they came as separate objects. I'm going to click, I'm going to right click here, select rename. I'm just going to call this uh, left leg. Now the reason why I call this left leg 
the blue arrow is always pointed to the Z direction, to the Z direction here. Where the Z direction is the forward direction. Z is forward or backwards. So as I go that way now, okay, so this is forward, this means that the the other leg here on the other side is the left leg. And if I click here, I can see the right leg. So I'm just gonna call this right leg. Please pay attention to the way I name the object. So I'll start with lowercase letter and then to separate the words I don't put spaces, I just put capital letter. Now I'm gonna click and drag the leg color to the right leg and to the left leg. I'm gonna click on the head in color material to the head and the eyes to the eyes and now if I go here I'm just clicking on my mouse cursor's wheel and I'm gonna right click here as you can see the objects are in place so what I need to do now I need to make sure that this object like his eyes will go inside his basically body so I'm gonna click here on the eyes and then I'm going to change the Z position by clicking and dragging. Okay. Now, another way to move around the body is I can right click on my mouse and then I can use the WASD uh, to move around the object, the character. person at the same time I'm um, holding the letter A on my keyboard and the S to go further back okay so I'm happy with that so now I'm gonna bring his legs up so I'm gonna click on the left leg and I'm gonna hold the shift key down and click on the right leg as well to highlight both legs and then I'm gonna use the change the Y value so I'm gonna click and drag upwards and again, I'm going to right click and use the WASD. Okay, this looks good. All right. Now I'm going to select the whole Tinker character. So I'm just going to change the name to Mr. T. And with the Mr. T, the whole element selected, I'm going to bring the character further down to be on the ground, but not too far down to go within the ground. I think that's enough. Okay. This will do. Okay. Now I've done this, the next thing we need to do is bring the animation panel and the animator i'm just going to before i do that i'm going to go to file select save and file and then save project now i'm going to go to the windows tab i'm going to select animation and i'm going to click animation i'm going to click and drag the animation panel and place the animation panel next to the console panel like that. I'm going to go to the windows now I'm going to select animation and this time I'm going to select the animator. I'm going to click and drag the animator and place the animator next to the animation. So here I've got the project panel, <coughs> excuse me, I've got the console panel, let's clear the arrows, I've got the animation panel and then I've got the animator panel. With the animation panel selected, I'm going to click on my character and I will click create. Now, if I, you don't see the create button here, it's because you have not selected your character. 
So sometimes if you have not select your character, now it's, it's always create button there. Make sure you select your character first and then select create. I'm just going to create a new uh, folder within the assets folder. So go one step back, go to the assets folder, and I'm just going to call this folder animations. I'm going to click save. Okay. Now I'm going to bring some properties. I'm going to click add property and I want to animate the left leg and the right leg. So for the left leg first, I'm going to select the transform and I want to transform the position. So I'm just going to click the plus icon for the position and I'm going to go back to the left leg, transform. Also, I want to transform the rotation. Now I'm going to go to properties again. I'm going to add a new property and I'm going to bring here the position. So I'm going to click plus. And also for the right leg, like I did on the left leg, transform, rotation. So now if I expand them all, we'll be able to see that I've got both the position, the rotation for the left leg and the position, the rotation for the right leg. Now I'm going to go to the animation here. I'm just going to create a new clip. And I'm just going to click uh, type here for this clip. I'm just going to call it idle and click save and then I'm going to add a property I'm going to go to the left leg add position property left leg transform and rotation I'm going to add property right leg this time transform position add property right leg transform rotation so now I've got all the elements for the legs on my idol now the idol is the original position where the character will be I'm gonna go now here and I'm gonna create a new clip and I'm gonna call this clip wrong I'm gonna click save and I'm gonna follow exactly the same steps now I'm going to go to the Add Property, I'm going to go to the left leg, select Transform, and I want to put the position and the rotation. So I'm going to go back to Add Property, left leg, Transform, Rotation. Add Property, this time is the right leg, Transform, Position, Add Property, right leg, Transform, Rotation and so on and so forth now the original animation we're not going to be using that now what you can do you could actually uh, go through the uh, folder where you have created the object and you could actually delete that but for the meantime we're going to ignore that so the point that the reason why I've made this is because I wanted to show you different animations that you can actually put some of the animations you can use, some of the animations you're not going to use. Now, for the idol, I just want his eyes to go up and down. So, I'm going to go to the idol, and I'm going to remove his legs. In fact, yeah, let's make his legs just go up and down a little bit. So, I'm going to click. Now, let's take this, his legs off. click here, remove, click here, remove, click here, remove, and then click here to remove them. This only on the idle. Now on the wrong, we have them. Let's go back to the idle again. I want to put a property on the idle and then I'm just going to use his eyes a little bit and I'm going to transform and let's scale them. So when we go to this frame here, frame 0 0.15, I want to scale his eyes. So let's make sure that his eyes will be scaled. OK, 
Okay, so his eyes will be going like that. One is idle. I think I've overdone a little. Let's bring it down a bit. So I've made, okay, I've made it. Okay, let's delete this by highlighting, by clicking and dragging, I can highlight multiple keyframes, we'll call them, and press the delete key. So let's have a look here now. And then it will go down. Okay, that's cool. So this is what we call 60 frames per second. So this is the fra uh, refresh frame rate for uh, the majority of the, uh, of the screens. So that's why we have 60 frames per second. You can always uh, customize this. The less frames you use, the faster the animation will become. The more frames you add in, the uh, slower the animation will become. Now we've done this. Let's go to the ROM and let's expand this. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make this a bit smaller so I can actually see all my uh, elements here. I'm going to click on the 0 0.15 and let's rotate, let's go to the other side. I'm using the wheel on my mouse and the right key on my mouse as well. Now, another quicker way to do it is, say for instance, if you are far away from the object, you select, uh, let's use the left leg for now. You place the mouse cursor within your scene and then you press the letter F. This takes you directly to the, uh, to the object you have selected. Okay, it's gonna check sideways the object, that's better. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start rotating it and basically change the position as well. So we're talking about, we're referring to the left leg now, which is here. So I'm just gonna click and drag this position. So I don't want to change the X value. So I'm just gonna change the X value back to zero. Uh, let's have a look at the Y value. Yep, we're gonna raise the Y value a little bit and then change the position. Maybe forward a bit, yeah. And also the rotation. Let's go like that. Okay. Now I'm gonna do the same, but the opposite on the other leg. So let's go. Let's see, right click and use WASD to go to the other side. That's better. Let's zoom out a bit. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put basically the same values that I had. So the rotation for the X here, it's going to be, let's make it 20. And here for the rotation X, I'm just going to make it close to this. So I'm just going to put 20. That's better. So here we have uh, 7 for the position, for the Z value position we have 7. So Z position value I'm going to put 7 as well. So now we have this element there. So if I press play Zoom out a bit. All right. So it doesn't look that smooth. So I'm going to pause this, and I'm just going to go back to the animation here. I'm going to highlight all the frames here and then click and drag them a bit to the right. Well, let's go to the 25. Let's press play. As you can see, it's a bit smoother now. Okay. So because we have 60 frames, 
let's go half. So I'm going to highlight all the keyframes now. I'm going to click and drag it to 30 frame. Let's have a look now. So this is perfect. Okay. So let's stop that. So what we want is we want to basically switch when we once we're here we want to switch the rotation so we need to figure out the numbers here so the 7 and the 7 stay as it is the only thing we need to draw basically we're going to make this minus 20 and that one we're going to make it uh, 20 so I'm just going to click here I'm going to say uh, let's have a look there again yeah the x value for the rotation so the x value for the rotation here is going to be 20 here is going to be minus 20 and I'm going to do the same here at the beginning let's in fact before I do that let's try yeah can you see the flickery that's happening there so we don't want that so we're going to click here and then here we're going to put 20 and here we're going to put minus 20 so now if I press play let's deselect it let's select the whole object ok that's better let's right click and use the WASD okay we have a nice animation so let's bring the character further down a bit Okay, this is how you're animating the legs. You could actually animate uh, hands as well. Uh, you could actually make the hands uh, draw a saw out or put bone and arrow or throw knives, etc. etc. So I'll try to keep the animation settings as simple as possible, but the same technique can be applied to any object to basically generate uh, a nice smooth animation sometimes as you, as you saw before you have to highlight the keyframes and click and drag them to the right position until you fully satisfied now you can click and drag individual keyframes as well but again I wouldn't recommend that okay try to keep everything the same if you want to experiment with things please do so and if you break it you can always delete the animation and start again so if I go here and select the animation, this animation here, okay, I can always basically delete these elements, animation here, okay, and let's go back to ROM now. All right. So this is our own, and this is our idle. Okay, our idle, his eyes, is more moving. Okay, the next thing we need to do now is click on, uh, let's go to run, and I'm just gonna, okay, I'm now gonna go to the animator and as you can see here, we have the animation position, the idle position, and the ROM position. Now I'm going to right click on the animation position, and I'm going to select delete. We don't need this. So we have the idle position and the ROM position. Now what I, want you to, what, what I would like you to do, I would like you to right click and select make transition. Then click and drag until you reach to ROM. 
So from idle, I would like to go to ROM. Then if I right click on ROM and select make transition, I want now to go to from ROM back to idle. So with the idle to ROM uh, transition selected, I'm just gonna go here and expand the settings. I'm gonna change the exit time to one. I'm going to change the transition to zero and then I'm going to uncheck both tick boxes. So the red, the yellow icon represents that it's asking us to basically add an action there where basically will trigger this event. So we're going to put an action in a minute. I'm going to go now here and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go from the run to the idle. I want the exit time to be 1, the transmission duration, transition duration to be 0, and then I'm going to uncheck both boxes here. So now I've done this, I'm going to go to the uh, parameters here, I'm going to click on uh, plus icon, and I'm just going to pull a boolean data type. So the boolean data type is true or false. I'm just going to call this wrong. So when I check on it, it's going to run. When I uncheck on it, it's going to stop running. So now I've done this, let's go back to, uh, let's add a behavior. Let's not add the behavior actually at the moment. Let's go back here, select the idle to run. And I'm going to add uh, a new condition. So I'm just going to click on the plus icon and automatically is picking up the condition. So I want the condition is to run. And when the run condition is true, so when it's checked, okay, I want the, the character, the animation to go from idle to run. I'm going to click here now, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click on the plus icon, and it's picking up the run again. But when it goes back from run to idle, I don't want this to be true. I want to be false. Okay. So now I've done this. Press play. Okay, cool. If I press play now to test my project. So by default, my project, the eyes are moving because it's the idle. If I check this box, the animation is running. And then if I uncheck it, and if I check it, and if I uncheck it, and so on and so forth. Now, in the next video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a C -sharp script where you will be able to check and you know, uncheck this box by using the keys on your keyboard. I hope you've learned something new today. I hope you, you, you will use these new skills of yours to create great video games.